are you? I'm Chad Kruger. Chad, who'd you have beside you? This is Mr. Ryan Peek. Um, we've been a band together for, well, this is our second band together. That was a Ever. that was a huge forever inhale forever yeah exactly um, <laughs> yeah, wow because well I mean the village idiot yeah the minute I got out of high school um, so that was ninety three um, so we've been and then you know we did that for a couple of years two and a half years we were kind of doing covers and stuff like that and then. Um, the summer of 95 we got together to record some demos for something we had no idea what we were doing or what that was going to be called and and our and in 96 in january we played the town pump um you remember the pump um and uh we were nickelback at that point in time and uh you know the rest is history i guess chad and ryan of nickelback that's correct yeah at neptune records that's a first for me he was you were here a week ago i was here Two days, ago, Two days ago, I think. Strange, strangely enough, I was like, I came in with my daughter to buy some records, and uh, and no shit, she comes in, she's like, oh, Nardwar T-shirt. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, do you want it? Let's get it. Okay. Oh, Neptune bag. Let's get the Neptune bag too. So I literally, he brought me downstairs to show me this yesterday or day before yesterday. I'm like, this is great. I got, I got a lay of the land before I even got down here, so it's great. Been, we've we've been watching you for <laughs> well, how long? So late 90s for sure um like we've seen so many of your interviews you're a legend dude and so uh when uh when it, you know somebody proposed like hey you guys should uh you know you should guys do an interview with nardwar we we're like oh we would love to do an interview. i'm a little bit nervous to be perfectly honest actually because no you're yeah. i'm hoping you're, that you've done some uh, serious homework and yeah. you're very thorough so let's see chad mr haynes did he dress up as you on halloween that I don't remember. Um, uh, Rick Haynes. Um, the, Did he? <laughs> this is news to me too. I didn't That's know this. Like which Halloween? Uh, so I, I've, I wouldn't. A teacher. Yeah. No. He was. He taught. He was our phys ed teacher. He dressed up as you. Did he? Do many people dress up as Chad? Uh, I, I do. I, like try every, gonna, I try to dress up every, as me every day. Every day. <laughs> On Halloween, have you seen people dress up as you? No, I've heard it. I've heard it. Uh, I've heard. Uh, that that was a costume that some people have attempted. Um, it's pretty average if you ask me, but uh, I, unbeknownst to me, Rick Haynes, our gym, our phys ed teacher in high school, well, he taught you as well. No, yeah, I know. I, I, that's that's strange that you would know that that happened because yeah. I haven't heard that name in, in forever. Well, you are Nickelback. We have to know. Absolutely, you do as you do, Nardwar. And you also did Hamlet in a graveyard. <sighs> What? I think that had something to do with Scott. I think this had something to do with Scott. And you're an actor. Uh, you're an actor? No, but we um, we wound up doing. Uh, Scott did a song. Our Scott, old, our old singer Scott yeah. Holman in a, a cover band. Yeah, and uh, he climbed down a hole, and then he was. Yeah, we filmed this thing, and yeah. That that takes me back. That definitely takes me back. You were doing took, Shakespeare. Took me a Shakespeare. Second. Well, because anytime you could, anytime you could do anything musical to get out of doing, you know, a two thousand oh, yeah. word report or whatever on anything, it's just like, are we allowed to do music? They're like, yeah, if you want, go ahead. So anytime we were allowed to just morph it into something, you know, because then we could have fun with it. And then we're, yeah, yeah. you know, creating or filming and doing all the stuff. But yeah, I vaguely remember this. I'm gonna have to ask Scott. I hope there's video on this or at least like beta of um, some sort. Scott probably has it. I mean, he doesn't. I, I guarantee you, Holman's got a. Oh, it's recorded. Yeah, no. Wow, this yeah. is great. Internet exclusive here. I'd like to give you a gift for your pool room: a Tower of Power record okay. and also a Q record. What can you say about your pool room? Well, uh, I do love to shoot stick. I shoot a lot of. Uh, I shoot a lot of pool. Yeah, these guys both look like sharks. <laughs> um, yeah, no, it's very cool. Is there a place to display these? Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. The, the pool room. In the in the, the pool in room. The, like a mantle. Uh, in the bar at the at the house. Uh, I mean, this is uh, these are some great <laughs> little uh, little dancing man, little tower power. I mean, take a look at that. That goes right next to your dog's playing. Paper, yeah, but like seriously, those two, uh, they look like hustlers from slightly different sides of the tracks. But uh, I think they both kick your ass in a game of pool. Do you collect 
Liverpool records? I don't. I don't, but I do now. Yeah, I absolutely do now. I'm just going to set these right here. And also, we have a gift for Ryan right here, a 1958 original Sun recording by Jerry Lee Lewis. Oh, my God. Jerry Lee Lewis. And I thought this would be perfect for your jukebox. Ah, uh, yes. <laughs> Here we go. That's, uh, yeah. Yeah, for my jukebox. We've, wow. Uh, I've got the jukebox from our local Boys and Girls Club yep. in Hannah, Alberta. They, uh, Wait, they were. How much did you pay for that thing? I didn't pay a thing for it, is actually. Is it an original Wurlitzer? It's an original, it absolutely is. I, I took it, and, uh, well, they were just going to throw it away. They said it doesn't work. So I, I said, well, we'll take it. So my girlfriend at the time and wife now uh we took it <laughs> that was that was some quick qu very no. quick clarification no, I, I, it's, it's no it's it's time specific back then because she's the one that had the connection on it she said uh yeah. they would uh, they would give it to us so i took it and it just needed a, uh, a new uh, a new needle and so we're like that's it wow so we stuck we would buy like Every 45, we could get that we want to listen to most of the 80s stuff. And because most of them are like A side and then B side, sometimes you knew, sometimes you didn't. We would like stick two together, slide them in the slot. So every side was an A side. Yeah, you're, that, that was great. That that jukebox is badass. Where is that it jukebox? It still works. It's downstairs in my house. I'm going to put this in later on. Well, it's on Sun Records, 1958. Really? And I thought Sun, Jerry Lee Lewis, yeah. also Johnny Cash, who was on Sun, and yeah. Johnny did San. Quentin? He played oh, San Quentin. Good. Yes, he did. Look at that connection. <laughs> Thank That's you for awesome. connecting the dots for us, because we wouldn't have connected all those dots ourselves. That would have taken quite some time. Thank you for leading the way. That's awesome. That's very cool. That's fantastic. That's some inside baseball. Yeah. We like it. 416 2nd Avenue West, Hannah. <sighs> I don't even recognize that address. Four. Custom... Oh, custom audio? Yes. That's custom audio. Because oh, I'm like, I'm like, I don't oh. think, I'm like, that wasn't. Um, uh, That's getting granular there. Like, I <laughs> oh, do you mean right next to the post office? Yeah, yeah, I know that place. Uh, that was important to you guys. Custom audio was an important place, absolutely. It's like the only place, wow. Yeah. That's the only, that's the only place, custom audio. That's the only place you could get records yep. in town. And uh, otherwise, it was a two hour drive, at least anywhere else. Yeah, Calgary was like if if you if you were driving quick, you could get to Calgary in like two hours and twenty minutes. But yeah, like custom audio, they were the only ones that could. And like once in a while, we could order stuff in. Yeah, I mean, a town of twenty nine hundred people out in the middle of the prairies. You know, that was that was our only, <laughs> it was our only version of Neptune Records that we had. Um, so uh, custom wow. audio with the cassettes and the long plastic the things, long plastic like thing, guards, yeah. so that you couldn't try to avoid. Uh, couldn't, um, so Chad couldn't stick it in his jacket. That's what it was. Right. It's, it's too big to put in your jacket. You Charlotte Kennedy, her mom started a music store. She did. Yes. Um, uh, I can't remember her name. I tried to. I tried to get a job there, teaching guitar, um, but. Uh, her mom wouldn't hire me. <laughs> Chantel, Chantel Kennedy. That's who it was. Uh, I'm th thankfully, some of these are starting to come back to me. Chantel Kennedy's mom. Yeah. And uh, I remember, like, I think I. Uh, you almost taught guitar there? I almost got a job teaching what guitar. What to teach? Anything I could. <laughs> what <laughs> licks did you know? Yeah. <laughs> like, this is how you finger tap. Uh, <laughs> just, no, but if you just, like, any kid that came in that wanted to learn how to play a song, if I could just learn the song and then teach him how to play it, I mean, anything to just not get a straight job would be <laughs> fantastic. Now, what can you say about this picture right here, Chad? What is this picture right here? Hopefully it isn't someplace. Oh. Hopefully it isn't somewhere I broke into. <laughs> in penitentiary and no. What is it? And if we turn it over, if we turn that picture over? Yeah, I was going to say it's probably the back of the uh, the Henry Kruger uh, Regional Water Treatment Plant. So that's my grandfather. Uh, his, uh, Henry Kruger was actually, uh, he started off as the, uh, when he got voted in, he was the Minister of Transportation. And then he went on to... Uh, for Alberta, right? For Alberta. Yeah. yeah. And then, uh, I can't remember the exact title. It was um, Soil and Water Conservation. Uh, something along those lines was his next ministry. And he wound up uh, bringing clean water cleaner water uh, to our hometown of Hannah. He That's got, unreal. He got a pipeline mm -hmm. uh, brought in from the Red Deer River and all of the constituents, all the towns all the way down along the way got clean water because we used to drink out of a slough. I don't know if you know that. Right by where your family uh, used to own property. Because he owned, he owned the... There you go. Yeah, he owned the... You guys had the farm uh, from Hannah pretty much all the way to Fox Lake and uh, we used to... Um, Helmer Dam 
mm-hmm. was where Hannah originally got its water until my grandpa did that. He, yep. But he also gave you a ring? He did give me a ring, yeah, when I was uh, 13. Um, and... Uh, did some kids try to steal the ring from your hand? Yeah, I was. Uh, well, because I got. Sent, when did this happen? Because when I when I got sent away to juvie, yeah, yeah. Uh, the ring oh. I had. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sort of grown, and the ring had not, obviously, and uh, it wouldn't come off my hand. And so at one point in time, when they let you out in the yard, uh, this guy tried to steal the ring off me, and thank God it wouldn't come off my hand. And when I got back in, inside, they uh, they cut it off of me, and I'm like, mail this home, because <laughs> there's there's some guys in the yard that kind of want this. Where you are, you are taking me down the path. You are leading me down memory lane here. Heaven. Well, you are Chad and Ryan of Nickelback. We have to lead down. All roads lead to Han Alberta. Han Alberta. And Ryan, your first gig was Tesla. My first gig was Tesla. No, my first gig. No, my first gig. Like to, first to, 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 to go see. My first show that I ever went to see was uh, Iron Maiden. I saw Iron Maiden uh, with roses. With Guns N' Roses, yeah, yeah, Guns N' Roses opened up for him. No love for Tesla. No, 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 no. <laughs> sorry, I sorry. I did. I, I saw did Tesla. Not see Tesla. No, I wasn't. I wasn't driving at the time. I was a bit young, so I just got there when I got there. But uh, yeah, it, it, the Guns N' Roses show was it, it was great. Like in the sense of that was when I first started playing music, and I had some friends that had been listening to. Um, Ray went appetite for this. Was it a Guns N' Roses show or was it Guns N' Roses and Maiden? No, it was it was Maiden. That'd be, that'd with, be, that'd be a great show. Maiden with Guns N' Roses. It was like they were opening up, which was that was it was fantastic. But nobody they knew. Did, no one knew who Guns no, N' Roses no, was no, then. That's kind of what I mean. Like they were they were completely unknown at the time. Oh yeah, no, I was I was full on for Iron Maiden. I I didn't really care if I sung Guns N' Roses. Were you in the pit? I was in the pit. I was I was I was uh, I was right down in the middle, about three or four rows back, and. Um, yeah, I saw. Well, that's when Axl Rose was. Well, he was out there. He's full of piss and vinegar, obviously, at the beginning. And uh, he j- he threw his mic down and just got in a huge fight with somebody right in the front row. This big tall guy. Just <laughs> he wasn't scared. They just started throwing down. And I'm like, holy shit! This is a this is a rock show. And then they scooted it off. And then Iron Maiden came on and just flash pots and just unreal. That was Seven Son of a Seven Son tour, I think. And you were at that gig. I was not that gig. No, you were at the Tesla gig. I, I've seen. I, I saw Tesla play. I'm trying to remember who they. What was your first gig? Uh, I think it was Metallica on the Justice for All tour. And were you in the pit? No, I was. Uh, I was not in the pit. Thankfully, I was just kind of up on the side. But we had we had good seats. Um, Have you guys got into the pit recently at all? Not really. That's the last time you've got into an actual pit. Oh my God, Austin! I jumped in the pit. Um, we were playing way back in the day, and and we were playing some heavy tune, and th- we actually got a pit going, and I was like, I'm getting in there, and I just, I jumped in there, and it was one of those things where, <laughs> it's you get in there, it's like I immediately regret yes. this decision. <laughs> I do not belong no. here anymore. No, I, I, so I jumped lot- in there, and I thought they were going to kind of go easy on me, and I jumped in because we weren't, I was like, we weren't headlining, we were opening up for someone else, and yeah, we yeah. jumped into this. I jumped in this pit. And they just started kicking the shit out of me. It was great though. Like it was fun. Like I got in there, <laughs> you know. Uh, they got their licks in. Yeah. Um, yeah. Elbows were flying. Uh, a couple cheap shots. Uh, you took, as, it, as it goes in the pit, you know. Goes in the pit. I know. I know. I know. And, uh, I, I made my way back up to the front, got out, and the security guy's just like, I, he's like, I'm not coming in there to get you, dude. You got to get to me. So I got out of there. A couple bumps and bruises, but you know, I absolutely remember. And then it was like. Uh, Oh, I want to say there was probably maybe like a 1500 seater, and this was like in sold out. Uh, probably 99. We weren't even like I said. We were, I think we were opening for whoever was headlining, but a heavier band. And, and Do you remember that, Ryan? I have no recollection of that whatsoever. I, I'm trying to think of the last time I was in a pit. I think it was. It's been a while, but I think we were at. Welcome to the power. <laughs> it, that, that's what I'm saying. I think it, it was for the Disciples of Power and Mud Honey at um, uh, what's that called Highwood. Festival. 93. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, I would just south of Edmonton there. We went and... Uh, Drink oh, your God. booze, pop your pills. But play safe. You have had just entered... You have just entered the power trap. Grouch his lab and say, holy shit. They were, they, were, they were really good. I think Social social Distortion was there and Pork Sword. There were some, there were some really niche bands. It was, it was good. Brian Chad of Nickelback, who else do we have in the room right now? 
Uh, we've got Dax, uh, Ryan's son. We've also got uh, Brad. So Brad's our tour manager. Brad Kind right there. Chad, what can you say about Ryan's stance when he's playing? Um, I'm a, I'm a left foot, I'm a left foot forward guy, right foot back, lean back. So I'm, I'm this. Ryan is a. He, I think sometimes he's a. I'm a switch hitter. Right? You're, yeah, you, you, you like yeah. you. You have the guitar over to the side, and then you come down, and you come up and sing this way, and then you kind of come down that way. Um, so I'm, I, I guess, I'm more of a straight on sort of this, and and you. Uh, you're definitely over. I don't know. Show me. I, 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 I'm trying to remember how you do it. Play by, play by, play well, what about you? Whoa, it's like you are. Up. You're damn close. That's right. I think. I think I'm right foot forward. When I'm away from the microphone, I go. I uh, go right foot forward. I'm not quite sure why. Whatever it feels natural, but it is. It's very symmetrical how we stand on stage. If you're a left foot and I'm like this, like, I mean, but right foot Wonder forward. Twin powers here. Just like you, we, you I ding. I, I, no? I love it. I, Whatever works, man. Right? I don't. Any How would you describe Chad on stage? Chad, Chad, Chad. His, he's ex exactly what he says. It's like I never really noticed, but he's definitely because he's he gets the, he gets the heel bopping like this. He gets the heel really bopping. Yeah. And uh, but he so he I think like I I get a choice. I can kind of move around and do stuff because I'm not always singing. He's always singing, so he's kind of locked to that microphone. Yeah. So he kind you get up what's comfortable and it's good. I've never really had to dissect my well, stance like this before. Uh, I just always thought that Hetfield had the coolest. I always thought Hetfield had the the best. I don't know. He just looked. I don't like. I don't know. He just looked like he was ready to fight or something. He's just in this like stance of just kind of like. And I always thought his was be like that. That that's how you're supposed to stand. I guess. I don't know. Because um, if you look at some guys like like Lemmy from Motorhead, for instance, oh, yeah. like, and he's got the mic way up here. And What's, when you when what? you do that, Hetfield's got it down here. He's got it way low. Yeah. And Lemmy's got it. You know, up and down and right down and okay, you know, but, but okay now now stretch your both bad for your neck. Stretch, both yeah, but stretch your vocal cords like that and then try and sing something. Maybe that's why it was like the Ace of Spades. <laughs> Maybe that's why it sounds like that. <laughs> Killed by death. There you yeah. Go. And I was wondering, Nickelback, what can you say about metal, specifically Canadian metal, masters of metal? Masters of metal. Okay, so who's on here? Masters of metal. Try, right. try. So I'm trying to Amble. see. Lee Aaron, yeah. Lee, Lee Aaron. What can you say about Lee Aaron? Lee Aaron, first lady of metal in Canada, as they call it. Yeah. Is that what they call it? Yes, Lee Aaron. God, yeah, she's the, a the metal queen. Yeah, the metal queen. And what? check out the cassette, how worn it is. Does this symbolize oh. you growing up, a worn metal cassette? Oh, yeah. Like, that looks like... That's like every cassette of mine. Where oh. you, you, usually, you have to look at, like, oh, this is... K you can't read this at all, because it's all blurry. Yeah. So you go, oh, it's K-Tel. Oh, that's got to be my... Uh, <laughs> this this album one, here, yeah. yeah. K-Tel! Oh, yeah. K-Tel is like... K-Tel brings back so many memories. Uh, the, the television commercials. Anthrax. Uh, anthrax. Among the Living. Uh, mine was just like... Like when the high end starts to do the... Oh, yeah, yeah, Because you just listen. Super cassette. Oh, yeah. It's like it just starts to waver so bad because you've just played it so many times. This is really good. Run to the Hills, Iron Maiden. Would have that been your soundtrack growing up? A lot, a lot of it for sure. I mean, for sure, Iron Maiden, Quiet Riot, um, uh, 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 Rush, Accept, Balls to the Walls. Oh, for sure. Balls Coney Hatch. I never got into Coney Hatch or Fist. But yeah, no, you know what was a big one was um, we listened to a lot of metal growing up. I remember Metal Blade Records metal or Blade uh, Records or uh, what was that other one they had? Uh, um, uh, metal, not metal Bonsai, force. Or... Bonsai, Bonsai Records. Okay. Yeah, there was we, uh, L Lauren Bidelspeck, our old guitar player, would just have tons of these Bonsai and Metal Blade uh, yeah, cassettes. We... What about classic Canadian metal like the Metal God Thor? Well, do you know Thor? I do. I've seen this before. I've absolutely I seen this on this thing. Yeah, I did. I actually saw. That. I didn't. I didn't know about him growing up at all. Keep but, the dogs uh, away. But, uh, and he was on Roadrunner too. Was he? In '85. Yeah, right. Yeah. No, like, what can you about Thor, the Canadian metal god? Did 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 he just come out on stage with like a like a two-handed sword or something? Yeah, he could bend steel. He could blow up a hot water bottle. <laughs> he would bend steel. That's right. That's a good bit. That's I mean, so awesome. I was never that ripped at that age, so it's like I don't know if I could have pulled that off. Did you know of him growing up? I did not. I did, I did not know of him. You know, 
<laughs> we need to get oiled up for our. We need to start getting oiled up for our uh, photo shoots. I didn't know about Thor and or, some Dobermans. Or, we got yeah, <laughs> or, or Man of War. Man of War is another one of those covers that you're like. Well, yeah, check no, out the that. insert. Check out the insert on there. Thor's also put out 39 LPs. He's still going today. He's prolific. That's what I've he's heard. Still jacked. Probably he is. <laughs> <laughs> that dog is pissed. Keep the dogs away. Keep the dogs away. How much oil? Let's see. How much oil is Thor rocking right here? It's uh, Canadian legend Thor. He's also a very famous bodybuilder too. That makes sense. He's Body a, rock. Yeah. He's jacked. He could be. He could be a hair model too. Like. And you saw the doc on him. I did. I, I saw the doc on him. Uh, yeah, and he's still going. Is that he, was that was what it was about. Is yeah. He still ripped. Oh, well, he's still going for it. Yeah, he's still bending steel on stage. I don't know. I didn't. I don't remember the shirts off scenes anymore. But uh, he's definitely going for the bending steel. It's bit. awesome. Yeah. As soon as I saw that picture, and I wonder where I've seen this. I don't know where I've seen that before, but I'm like, I remember seeing this album cover and just been like, like the dogs are fantastic. Did someone once shoot a pellet gun at you when you were sitting on an inflatable? I was, I was, uh, I was sitting on, I was on a, I was on an inner tube on Fox Lake. I mean, these, these pellet guns were, you know, uh, you couldn't take a straight shot cause we were so far out there and they were, there was three of them and they were shooting at us. Uh, he got me right above the eye. Whoa. I'm lucky. I still got an eyeball, uh, with a pellet gun. Yeah. And, uh, my mother, my mother lost her shit. <laughs> oh my God. And, uh. Like she wanted that kid. Uh, she wanted five minutes alone in that, you know, with a room. In Did a you room. have any idea this was coming? Like you were just out on Fox Lake for a good time? Yeah, we were. I mean, we were so far away know, from them. You didn't know you were being hunted uh, at the we, time. We, we didn't know we were being hunted wow. with pellet guns. I mean, they were. I think they were just trying to scare us. They were just trying to shoot around us and didn't realize that they were actually going to hit us. And, and uh, yeah, I got I got cracked with this uh, with this pellet. I mean, right above the eye, and I'm bleeding. I was very young at the time, and but I just remember Debbie like freaking. Out, they jumped in a car quick, and uh, and they. Uh, well, that's they, what I do if I just shot yeah, you with the pellet gun. I'd get the hell out of there. Fled. There was a strange amount of pellet gun wars. A lot, pellet gun, a lot of pellet gun and wars. I never understood that. I had friends. Hey, let's go. We're gonna go. Let's go do a pellet gun war game. We we'll just go up and hide behind the hills and the dirt, dirt mounds here. Yeah. And we'll shoot at each other. The pellet guns. That sounds terrible. Yeah. That sounds. Like, Off? like a BB gun's gonna sting. A pellet gun, I mean, like you, you will break the skin. Oh, you know, you're gonna, you can kill birds with, with, you know, squirrels and stuff like that with a pellet gun. It's gonna hurt like hell. The Canada Grey Motor Inn. Mm -hmm. Did you pour shooters there at the Canada Grey? I did. I worked, uh, I worked the shooter bar. Um, now what's that like? How was Chad working the bar? Oh, he was generous with the booze. How about that? Um, <laughs> yeah, he did well. He was a DJ there. Yeah, I was. DJed so I was, I was DJing, and uh, because they they needed somebody to just play some tunes, because otherwise you just because the jukebox they just mm -hmm. the same four people would play the same four songs all night long, and people just started going to you know the other bars in Hannah because there was three of them, um, and so they thought let's get somebody in here to uh, to play music, and so I borrowed a ton of Christie's CDs at the time mm -hmm. and a uh, bunch of country, a bunch of rock, a bunch of some heavy stuff. And I just took all those CDs down there and wired up a sound system using half of the PA that we had at the time. Remember that, that, uh, that full range speaker with the horn in it. Yeah, I, think, yeah. I, I, I think I've still got it. I do still have it. Um, yeah, it was, it was mono. So I just put both sides just out of that one speaker. So, do you remember this at all? No, no, I, I don't remember that. No, I was, I think I was out of town at that time. You like I literally I think it was in college at that time. Oh, uh, maybe. Yeah. And I remember your wife, your mom, uh, yeah. coming in one night. It was late, and and her and Jane um, Lynch. Lynch. Yeah. They I love these Hannah names. All yeah. right, they're like standard names. Yeah, Jane, Jane uh, Trina, and Jane. They came oh. in, and uh, they had. Uh, they had come up with this whole dance to uh, Ween. Uh, 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 Voodoo Lady? Voodoo Lady. Voodoo Lady. Voodoo lady. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Shaking that stick, driving me crazy. Uh, doing the thing that you do. A Ween cover? Oh, it was, it, it, no, it was Ween. They brought in the Ween CD and they're like, will you play this? Nickelback and Ween? <laughs> there oh, you go. Yeah. I was a big Ween fan. Oh, yeah. That's that's my, my, my wife now. Trina is my wife. And uh, I brainwashed her with a lot of the stuff I like to listen to. So yeah. we, Ween was the one we really got into way back in the day. So she brought in a CD? So she brings in the Ween CD and she tells me to put on uh, Voodoo Lady. And uh, so I, I put it on, you know, as the DJ. 
and uh, her and Jane got on the dance floor and they had worked out this whole dance routine that they did. They did the whole thing. Ask your mom. Ask your mom if she remembers that because I remember it vivid and it was hilarious and they had the whole thing worked out. And I think the reason this probably happened and the reason that your mom had the uh, chutzpah, if you will, to pull this off is because my mom taught your mom dance lessons back in the day. <laughs> what was it like playing the Silverado in Dawson's Creek? <laughs> uh, Dawson Creek. Dawson Creek, yeah. yeah. Well, this is where we would cut our teeth. You know, we'd go way up like we'd play terrace bc but like you wouldn't just they wouldn't book you for a night they'd book you for a week they'd book you for two weeks sometimes so like you'd really set up shop and you would get like we got to meet like so many people so we would show up and we were playing music the village idiot village idiot yeah cover man yeah yeah and we would show up and we would play all these cover tunes and um you know kind of scare away the the older crowd and and like kind of bring in the college kids mm -hmm. and you know so monday tuesday and probably wednesday was us <laughs> us indoctrinating the, the the town or city or wherever we were that that uh we weren't the uh yeah we weren't the classic rock band yeah and so then, and then you know by friday and saturday the place would just be packed with everybody our age right and 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 then once you know the bar owners would see you know the numbers that they would do from liquor sales uh that's when they would be like okay now we want you guys back and then they would start you know to pay us a decent amount of money um but yeah we would come to town and uh, you know all the all the older crowd would they were not very happy no. with us but You'd see them finishing but, their drinks quickly and, and they'd start moving <laughs> to the door and like, i was good with that i liked i liked the fact. what did they want to hear they want i mean they, they wanted to hear like uh it's just well, it's just the classic stuff, like yeah. probably like 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 n nothing nothing wrong with the song. Freebird, Freebird probably like Roxy Roller. They wanted to hear co cocaine, cocaine uh, Air like Air Clapton, ACDC, Zeppelin, uh, April Wine. They wanted to hear the stuff that the, was popular, like enough with that age group at the Run time. House Blues by uh, the Doors, like just I mean I don't I don't know how many times. I mean that one guy, he just kept paying us money, he just just play it again. He's like. Dup, 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 dup. Like, and we oh played uh, Mrs. Robinson, but the Lemonheads version That's of it. Right. And so yeah, he like he wanted us to play that a few times in a row. But that was that was the thing that we we learned a bunch of music from. Like we did a whole set of the hip, all tragically hip for one set. We could play fourteen tragically yeah. hip tunes. Uh, yeah, we game could just because we wanted to. The yeah. Black Dogs of Depression. Yeah, I wish Mike was here. It's a it's a cheery name. Um, yeah. That was your brother's band. Yeah, Mike. Folk, folk band. My Mike brother. Yeah, Mike, who's the bass player in the band, um, played in uh, BDOD, Black Dogs of Depression. I and actually have the cassette yeah. still at home. It's on cassette. Yeah, and, and that's uh, pretty good. Uh, he slept at the Rubber Room in Vancouver. Yeah. <laughs> yes, he slept at the Rubber Room in our I think in our rehearsal spot. Yeah, because I think it was about as big as this room. Uh, like it was this really room is so he was in two okay. bands at yeah. the time he was in Nickelback and the Black Dogs yeah no, he was in, well he was in Black Dogs of Depression before <laughs> <laughs> it's it's funny to Black Dogs yeah I, it's it's funny just to um, even hear uh, somebody say that name because um, <laughs> like so do you remember the Hungry Eye so they Mike would play the Hungry Eye and he played in his like Mike would play in his tidy whities and he just thought that was great so Mike's in there just and he shaved his head and grew this big gro goatee and uh, like he was he was all in like Mike was all in <laughs> yeah, that's pretty yeah that's pretty gutsy and they had this song and it, it uh what? Remember the songs? Yeah, one song. I don't. I don't. Well, you have the cassette. I have the yeah. cassette. They, I never listened. To it. They had this one song, and the singer was saying something like "awakening," but it sounded like "breaking eggs." He was like "awakening," and I would always say "breaking eggs." If I call Mike right now, and I say, and I go, "Here, I'll just put him on speaker," and I'll say, like, if he answers, this will be great, and and just this would be fantastic. Uh, just hold on. A little background: the Black Dogs of Depression. Yes, yeah. Bla the background of them. Uh, that was Mike and Mike Cooper. Is that right? Mike Cooper from Cameras, Alberta. Yeah, moved out here. Hold on. Here we go. Okay, let's hear this. Cup swim. Uh, I, we're just doing an interview right now with Nardwar, and. Oh, uh, yeah. And uh, you're on, like, you're on yeah, you're on speaker, bud. Um, I love Nardwar. Yeah, we all love Nardwar. So. If I say this to you, you're going to get this reference. If I go, breaking eggs. <laughs> oh, stop it. Okay. I, I, I don't, I don't want to play this anymore. Oh, no, 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 it's already been brought up, but uh, Nardwar brought it up. 
Mikey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Mike, what was the name of the band? The, the band was Black Dogs of Depression, of course. And what was your stage attire? Yeah, a lot of times, very little. <laughs> Can you be more specific? Some tidy whiteies? Oh, Nardo, Nardwar is asking you a question. Hold on. Uh, some, some what? Yes, go ahead. Some tidy whiteies? <laughs> Uh, you know, they could have. Been, I, I don't recall the coloration of the white whiteies per se. Uh, in that, uh, I, I did play relatively naked at a Halloween show at the Rubber Room. Yes. Did you sleep at the Rubber Room too? I did, in fact, sleep at the Rubber Room for quite some time. Yes. And and what was your day job? Uh, uh, at that time, I was I was working at the Starbucks up the hill. I think Nardwar, did you frequent the Rubber Room, sir? I, uh, it's an amazing practice space. My friend Sean Morazic was in there with Flash Bastard. Flash Bastard. Ah, uh, Flash Bastard. Yes, I remember those guys. And uh, the face puller guys were hanging around there mm-hmm. a lot. And um, well, Chad well, Brand, uh, Chad uh, Art. Uh, Art and. And Brent. 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 Yeah, Chad, Art, and Brent. That's right. They ran the rubber room hole. Oh, and, and who's the guy who mastered our. Oh, Cord Lord. He, remember Cord Lord? Yeah, he uh, he mastered our first de- uh, demo, whatever yes. whatever the hell we're calling that thing, uh, Hesher. Um, so there you go. But I just wanted to call you up. I, I wanted to make sure that because we all love Nardwar, and uh, uh, it sucks that you're not here to uh, to be here. Well, thanks very much, Mike. And do 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 do. Do do. By the way, yeah. Nardwar, you you might not recall this. You may. You uh, hung, hung around with my son at LAX. Dawson recognized Nardwar. Yeah, yeah. They, they That's had awesome. A, they had a detailed conversation. No, oh, very cool. Well, please say hi to him. I- I'm honored that he recognized me. That's amazing. Oh yeah, he he, yeah, he loves you. He loves you. Yeah, his his whole band is here right now. They're they're all in. They're in rehearsals uh, at the moment. So they're they're getting ready to uh, make a record and play some shows. Well, uh, yeah, he, he really enjoyed speaking with you, Nardwar. Well, please say hi to him and do 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 do. Have a good one, fellas. See you, buddy. See you. Bye bye. That was amazing. Some confirmation about the song. I'm upset that I had to imagine him in tidy whiteies when you described it. That's horrible. Yeah, well, it's my brother, too. Uh, but I love the fact that he's like, no, no, don't do this. And I'm like, name the band right now. And he's like, Black Dogs of Depression. I was curious. Let's go to much music right now. Uh-huh. <laughs> what exactly is going on here? This is an interview you're doing with much music. Terry, oh, wait, David no, Mulligan. I want you to say it because I wanted to say it was... I just saw this the first interview we ever did was with Terry David Mulligan. Um, of much music. Of much, much music. TDM. Jay Myris on camera. Yeah, that's right. Absolutely. That was in Gastown, I think. You were in Gastown. You- now, could you describe your look there? Uh, young. Clean. <laughs> could you describe Chad's look? Clean, Chad's look. Good looking. Look at that good looking kid Chad's, right there. Chad's young as well. We're both young bucks in that situation. Not, I- not a gray hair to be seen. Yeah, Chad. What could you describe as your look right there? Uh, I don't. I don't know. It's very. It's very ninety-two by the looks of things. It's very ninety-two. Yeah, yeah long curly hair. I look like a. You described your music as groove rock. That's right. Yeah, yeah. it was. It was groove rock, and and ba- way back then, I would say it was definitely. Well, I mean, that was, like I said, ninety-six. So, probably three. Four, probably three four years after the big seattle push went everywhere so we definitely had some seattle influences back then i would say um I but uh, warehouse chic i think warehouse, chic. warehouse sh- worker chic <laughs> that's all i could afford was a t-shirt and also in that interview was highway freak ticket highway freak ticket holy man i haven't heard that name in a long time highway freak ticket yeah i remember them L- they were L- yes they were in the interview did it? Because I, I think <laughs> with you it was a group interview. I think yeah. Amar, because I think Amar Management, who with Clyde and Terry, I think they, I think Highway Free Ticket was on. So it was like us, Highway Free Ticket, Jar, and Noise Therapy, um, if I'm not mistaken. And this is, I'm firing. I mean, there's there's things that are crazy. Br- brain death has occurred a long time ago. I don't remember a lot of things. Wow. Now I want to give you another gift, Chad and Nickelback. Vancouver yeah. Seeds number one, the first seeds from 1980. Holy, wow! Really? A very important series for you, isn't it? it seeds. Is. I'm trying to. Uh, 
This is the first seeds from 1980, yeah. featuring the wow. Carroll Brothers and a whole bunch of other wow. bands. This is crazy. Well, look at this, and it's great. Look at all proceeds from this album are being donated to uh, this, uh, Children's Hospital Fund. Yeah, the we seeds. Won seeds in uh, 99. That's right. Was that 99? Um, yeah. Yeah, so you, if you got, if you won seeds, it was essentially a battle of the bands from uh, C Fox, 99.3 The Fox. Do you like their old logo there? What I, was, about- I, was, I was kind of looking at that. It's like, I'm like right here, it's not represented very it high. Even, it's like, it wasn't you know, even that different when no. we, like, when we sh- uh, hit the scene in like 96, it was pretty close to that you know, when they had that building over on. The uh, letters got a little more sexy. Was that Richards. Richards. No, Richards. That one on Richards, that's right. Yeah, they, they, uh, and Jeff O'Neill was. I don't know how uh, night seats. I don't even know how they. Uh, Clyde and Terry just submitted us, and we uh, um, we won, and uh, I think we, we we got some airplay out of that. They guarantee you, you know, light rotation or some damn thing like that, and then. Uh, um, it also helped other bands like the New Big Shoes. New Big Shoes, yeah. They, Daniel's band. New Big Shoes oh, is a Daniel's band. New yes. Big shoes comes up a lot. Um, we love making New Big Shoes references. Daniel always, he's like your drummer. Yeah, our drummer Daniel. Um, yeah, I well, they, <laughs> it's my next call. Yeah, they, they, <laughs> they, they opened for us in a, at the Starfish Room as well. I yeah, think yeah. before I hadn't even met him at the time. So, yeah, that's strange. Hold what on. did you think? Uh, I, th- I think I missed the show. That's <laughs> what I think I did. I think I missed the set, too. Yeah, no, that was... Uh, was that the... Well, they Juno? won Seeds. They won Seeds uh, the year after us. Is that correct? Well, they were on Seeds. I know that. Yeah, same. It might have been the same year. I don't even... I can't remember. Nickelback, Chad. Nickelback, Ryan. Did you ever try to get on CITR UBC radio? We... Yes. Yes, we tried to get on a lot of college radio. We tried to get on a lot of college radio. I don't think college radio wanted us to get on it. No, <laughs> that was kind of the vibe I got. But no, I loved I loved college radio. I loved the the, the university. Well, like- CITR put out Discorder magazine, and they repped you. For instance, in their day book, ripped us or repped us? <laughs> <laughs> Babu. <laughs> Wednesday, September fourth, nineteen ninety six, stabbing Westward yes. and Nickelback at the Starfish. Room. That's yeah. right, stabbing westward. Oh, I, I loved that band at the time. Um, and they they were on tour. They they were opening up for Kiss. Um, and then they and then we they came to town on this brand new huge tour bus. They had this like H three or something, and, and we had never been on a tour bus tour before. Bus envy right there, yeah, yeah for and sure. Like we were like we were a van band. Like we made it. All, we'd gone back and forth across Canada a ton of times in a van pulling a trailer, and I'd never stepped foot on a tour bus before. And we were talking to one of the guys, and they were super nice. And uh, I was like, dude, we're a van band. Is there any way we could, like, would you be at, at all into showing us, the, you know, just what the inside of the tour bus looks like? And Brandon was drumming for us at the time. My cousin, Brandon Kruger, three Krugers in the band at that time. Brandon stepped foot on uh, Stabbing Westward's tour bus. And this thing was gorgeous. And all I kept thinking was, this is where I want to be. I want to get into a tour bus, right? And, uh, Brandon looked at it and and thought, I this is I don't want to live like this. I wonder if that was the TSN turning that point the right there. It was, the, it was the catalyst. That was the catalyst. Really, right there. Starfish gig. He yeah, says all the time. he says when I saw Stabbing Western's uh, tour bus, and I'm like, we were traveling around the country in a van. You saw the pinnacle of comfort and thought this isn't for me. Nope, not cushy nope. enough. Wow. No. When you moved to Vancouver, what sort of jobs did you have? Did you sell fish at the side of the road at one time? Uh, no, it was door to door, and there's nothing harder than door to door seafood sales. Um, that's tough. So um, that's incredible. Yeah, that's that's a hard gig. Um, I didn't buy the sales pitch. I just I didn't buy anything off the, this the guy. The sales pitch. I can still remember the sales pitch. You go knock on the door. Hi, how are you? And you always go right around dinner time, like right before dinner time, when people <laughs> don't know what they're gonna like. Dude, I was just doing anything I could. Oh, to, I know. To like clever, stop clever, starving myself. Yes. Um, yeah, you just go up to the door and, and give them the old, uh, um, what, what would I say? It's something like, hey, I was just uh, doing some deliveries in the area uh, to your neighbors. And anytime we're in the, the, the neighborhood, try and knock on the door, do a couple, uh, you know, some cold calling and see if anybody's interested in some of the specials we've got. We've got some jumbo shrimp. We've got lobster tails. We've got, uh, you know, all kinds of stuff. If you want to come out to the, uh, to the truck and take a look. And that's a hard gig. 
That's a hard gig. And I'm already out this truck. I want to take a look yeah, see what you got. Exactly. You got me. That's did a you ever see in a truck? No, I never saw. The, I never so uh, right before I quit the job. How long was that gig? I raided the truck. Oh, I, I have no idea. And I, because I was starving and I was, I just started like taking items out of boxes because I had to return all the food, right? Yeah, yeah. And uh, yeah, I'm like, I'm in there like taking, so three scallops out of this box. They're not going to notice that. And then like two crab legs. <laughs> and I was like, Dude, we were starving, starving. Oh, yeah. I remember. I remember yeah. Yeah. And I had, and I didn't want to show up like with all the long hair. So I had this hat. What do they call it? Primetime Foods? I think it's called Primetime Foods or something like that. And I, I had all the hair up in, in the in a hat trying to look a little, you know, half decently respectable. Trying to fit in. Yeah, because yeah, if this yeah. guy, because this guy, this guy. Are you going to buy fish off of this yeah, guy? Showing up to do, like that guy's selling you some, you know. I'm going to count my scallops if that, this guy is selling me scallops. That's the halibut? Make sure they're all there. This, this is the guy you want to get your halibut from? I don't know. I'd rather get my, my halibut from this guy. But it worked, though. It worked. Oh, it yeah. didn't work. I didn't sell, I didn't, like, I could barely sell anything. I couldn't keep, I couldn't stay alive. And, uh. How did you find out about the gig? Yeah, who's that? I, 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 uh. No, that was labor ready. Um, like, did you find out later it was fish? <laughs> I think I just answered an ad. I think it was just in the newspaper, and that's when I was just, we were all just, well, you found a cushy job right after that. Bastard cushy. That was a good job. That warehouse job was good. Oh, I know. But uh, it, uh, yeah, it was tough to kind of work and leave all the time for gigging. We always right. had to go on tour for two, three weeks. Tried getting a job with to let you go for two or three weeks every time. So, yeah, that was pretty good. Greg from not just another, not just another music, wha, wha, music, not store. music shop. Oh yeah, not just another music store. Yeah, 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 yeah. What do you think about that place? That was amazing. That place was great. That place was great for um, renting pedals. gear for pedals and whatnot that we would get. Like I remember we got a space echo from there last time, or the one oh, time. I remember that, something specific that we got from that oh, store. Do you? What did you mm -hmm. get from that store? So we had never used a. Uh, a talk, I think it's called a talk box. Um, and, uh, oh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. You son, of, <laughs> son of a bitch. Um, so a talk box. So, so what's his name? Uh, Peter Frampton. So the hose comes up and it goes in your mouth and like you play the guitar. Roger Troutman, zap. There you That's go. a two. Exactly. There you go. And it goes down into this, this box that has the speaker in it. And then the, the box sends the, it, all of it comes up into the the side of your mouth and you put it inside your mouth and then you, you're kind of just like opening your mouth and going like wow 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 doing this you know so the first time so we rent all this crap from uh not just another music store music shop whatever it's called and uh i go out there to use it for an intro to one of our songs and the guys all have this dumb look on their I'm face. I'm just filming. And, I'm and just you've filming. got a video camera. And they, they come out. And so I'm sitting there, I'm playing with this thing, and it sounds so cool. And I'm like, oh, my God, this is the coolest thing ever. And I, uh, it was the start of Breathe. <laughs> And I got this tube stuck in the side of my mouth, and I'm like, wow, 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 and I look over, and they're all laughing, and and he's filming, and there's like ten guys all standing around, and I'm just like, what do you? And then I'm like, oh, what did you guys do that? And one of them Mike, took the brother. tube. You want to call him back? Took the tube. That's the guy from Black Dogs of yeah. Depression. Took the tube. And stuck it down his butt crack and then placed it very, you know, pro <laughs> professionally right back where it's supposed to go. And I got right in my mouth and I was like, ah, I need to brush my teeth. So, and I hate you. And that's on tape right now. Mike's ass yeah. <laughs> on the on the talk box. Gross. I'll get released. Unreleased tape? Oh, no, it's, uh, well, the audio's released, but the video is uh, still unreleased. Worth considering that uh, maybe the next uh, documentary, maybe. The king of the band vans. Six wheels. Could you explain 30 years in storage? What happened? Uh, well, there's a song on here called High Time. You know, the, the, the first line of the, the chorus is, well, it's high time you and I got rolling. A little double entendre between rolling one up and, you know, getting on down the road. I thought, well, you know, once we start talking about leaning into this whole thing, like, let's, you know, we got to get a, a van on the cover and yada, yada, yada. But I always want to take things because I'm like, just putting a regular van is just going to be whatever. But if we get a, you know, get the old 
tandem axle on the back, like a six-wheeled van. The king of the band vans. Well, there you go. It's like, yeah, it gets even more cartoonish, right? And everyone just kept, they kept saying, like, why does this thing need to have six wheels? Why? I'm like, just trust me. If we go over the top, if it's over the top, car, it's going to be like, cause if it's just a regular van, uh, it's a keychain from the 70s. But if it's, you know, we can, it, it'll be ours if we, if we make it six wheels. And I came up with this stupid idea, and then... We actually found one. Brad tracked one down, uh, bought the thing, and it was, this thing was like just rat infested, didn't run, you know, falling apart, rusted completely out, and, um, and we turned it in. But was it hard to find? Like 30 years it sat? Uh, Brad just started going down websites, and he was trying to find, like, we couldn't find one. We couldn't find one that anyone would sell. And he started going on forums where guys just like to talk about their six-wheeled vans. And he found a phone number on there, and he calls the guy. What was the guy's name? Baja Charlie. Baja Charlie. Hey, it's Baja Charlie. You know? And oh, yes, it is. That's exactly who this is. <laughs> yeah. And Brad's like, uh, hey, uh, I, yeah, I got your number off a website, um, you know, that you, you, you speak in forums about having a, you know, a six-wheeled van. Would you be interested in selling it? And he's like, yes, I would. I'd very much like to sell that van. <laughs> so we bought the van, sight unseen, and then uh, we got in touch with uh, a company, um, and they built, this, they built this stupid thing, and it's fantastic. And we're taking it on tour with us. Just winding up here, Nickel. Back. Nico, back. I wanted to run through a couple gigs that you did. The UBC Pit Pub. Yep. Yes, the UBC Pit Pub. I think it was the only time they let us play there. That was in the, early, the mid '90s, '96, '97, or something like that. Um, we did a cover that night of. Um, Chad remembers a lot. Just saying, he's like way more than I remember. I don't remember any of this stuff. Tracy Chapman had just come out with Give Me One Reason, oh, oh. and we covered it that night. Did we really? Yep. How did it, how did it go over? <laughs> like gangbusters. Oh, wow. Better than, <laughs> better than our songs? Okay. Good. The Queens in Nanaimo. Oh, the yes. Queens, yeah. uh, on the, uh, Was that the one on the hill? Yes. Yep. Yeah. That night, um, we covered... Um, <laughs> I don't know. We covered the chorus of Genuine Pony. Come on and let's do it. Ride it on my pony. Remember that? We kind of just did I this, don't remember that. We just did this sort of like this metal riff and we started jamming to that. Oh, we oh, I remember we probably messed with that at one point, but I do not remember that being at Queen's Pub uh in Nanaimo on the hill. It's true. But you also played Studebakers, your first headline show, The Stood. Yes. Yeah, yeah. We so we used to open up for all of these bands, like these '80s bands, like we opened up for, we opened up for Twisted Sister. Do you that, we yeah. opened up for Rat. That wasn't was that Twisted Sister? That was decent. I was at that Rat gig. Yeah. I remember him going Rat and Roll, baby, Rat and Roll. Yeah. <laughs> and you've done a lot of gigs, Nickelback. And I wanted to ask you, winding up here, about early Nickelback, like your promotion. The state. There you, there you go. go. There's the state. What can you say about that era of Nickelback? I think it's quite amazing. In fact, like you would fly, Mike would fly all the way back east and pick up CDs. Yeah. He, from Sinram. He was the distributor guy for sure. Like, oh, here we go. There's the guy. There's the guy. There's the There's same the necklace same right there. Deal. There you go. Not a lot of uh, not a lot of different accessorizing going on there. There's Mike. There's Mike. Yeah. So Mike. So, I don't know if you know where that is. Well, of course you know where that is. That's the old sugar refinery, right? So, uh, we jumped. So, we we trespassed because <laughs> we weren't supposed to be in there. And uh, some guy started screaming at us. We took the pictures mm -hmm. as fast as we could. And we jumped back over the fence. Yep. Um, yeah. So, back in the day, um, I would call radio stations and ask, you know, and I was, I guess I was our independent radio promoter at the time. And then anytime we would get added to a radio station, uh, Mike would handle all of our distribution. So... You know, any anything like a an HMV or an AMB Sound or you know any any mom and pop store, anything that was in the vicinity that was getting any of that, you know, those radio waves. Mike would try and take our CDs that we were making ourselves um, back in the day, and he would take boxes of them, and you know, he just jam them into these stores, uh, you know, and uh, and we were just doing it the hard way, just grinding the hard way. Um, yeah, those are. I have a lot of fond memories from back then. You know, and Mike would also fly back east and pick up the CDs at Sinram and drive them around in a pickup truck. Absolutely, yeah. Like that's really boots on the ground, isn't it? Uh, yeah, Ryan was. You know, he was our, our booking agent. He was booking agent and and very infant internet. 
uh, guy. Yeah, but like, I, Mike would pick up the CDs yeah. and drive them around. Would he consign his CDs? That's kind of hard. Yeah, I mean, they had a, they had uh, departments for that. Like HMV definitely did back in the day. That they would take they would take independent product, and and uh, if it didn't sell after a certain amount of time, they would just mail it back to you, or you had to come pick it up, or they just give it away, or whatever. Um, I think Sam the record man was a tough one to, uh, for him to work with. <laughs> I think. I think Mike's got some stories about Sam the Record Man, <laughs> but A and B sound was good. Yeah, yeah. You know, we 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 had to. We definitely had boots on the ground for all this stuff. Thank you, Dorothy from SoCan. Dorothy from SoCan. It's just that's an old our old SoCan rep. Holy man, that's a that's a ways back. Because she recommended you to. Uh, if I had to guess, and I'm t- I'm trying to remember this one. Now. Uh, she probably. Uh, probably helped us get a, a maybe a, a factor grant back in the day to help with maybe recordings, pressings, or possibly a video. Because remember, yeah, fly video maybe. Maybe. Maybe, um, it was, maybe it was a fly video. And you need probably a lawyer to go with that. Ah, there we go. Oh well, the, the, here comes Simpkin. John Simpkin has. So been... thank you, Dorothy. Thank he you. set it all in motion. She set it all in motion. Okay. Uh, sometimes I want to thank Dorothy, and sometimes sometimes I don't want to thank Dorothy. I want to uh, track her down and yeah. I have think, a chat with her I, I about Simkin. That, I think if John tells the story, I, I, honestly, there was another guy. There was two guys. I think Clyde Hill had something to do with it. One of our original managers was also like, there's two guys. Uh, this one's good. He's a little expensive. And then there's this other guy, and he's not that expensive. And his name's John Simkin. <laughs> I think we went to John Simkin. John hooked you up with Jan Seedman. Uh, very true. Yes, tertiarily he hooked us up with Jan Seedman. And that was important. Yeah, it was. He, he was very important. I think. Um, I remember at the time that was that was something else. I was I was getting all the CDs and packaging them up into envelopes to send out to record companies and publishing companies and whoever. And he was too busy to help. He was busy. <laughs> In another undisclosed court case, and uh, so he's like, "Here's the list. Just take it." Uh, yeah, so, yeah, and so he, uh, so he said, "Here's the list. Go for it." So I sent it out to everybody, and it went. One of them was to Jan Seedman. I can't remember the publishing company he was. LA. So he was in L.A., and then he uh, heard it, um, wasn't interested. Well, he said he couldn't do anything with it at that yeah. at, at yeah. his company. Yeah, but he said, "I th- there's a guy I think I know um, who's looking around for stuff, and he sent it to Roadrunner." in LA. Um, Derek Shulman was the president at the time. Derek Shulman sent uh, Ron Berman, who wound up being our A&R guy, to um, Vancouver to see us play at The Gate, if you remember The Gate on on Granville. So we played The Gate and um, uh, they threw a a, a deal on the table and and we signed with uh, a metal label and uh, off we went. So Dorothy, Jonathan, Jan. The triad. And Nickelback. <laughs> and there you go. At the Much Music Video Awards, Mike would always wear a t-shirt, I hate Simpkin. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I love that t-shirt. <laughs> so not only that, but uh, when we were um, we were just um, inducted to the Canadian Hall of Fame uh, at this past Junos, we had, I don't know who did this, but this was fantastic. It's fantastic by word of the day, uh, evidently. Um life-size cutouts of John Simpkin all around the, uh, our after party. Uh, um, <laughs> That's right, too. Yeah. Do you have a picture? I absolutely do. Here's my happen. girlfriend kissing the cutout of John. Um, yeah. yeah. Yeah, John is uh, oh, John's John's a unique... A, John's a fan of that picture. John's a unique guy, I'm sure he is. Yeah, he's a very unique guy. He's uh, not a very traditional lawyer, uh, which is kind of... That works for us just fine. Tim from Neptune Records was in your video. What? You can see right there. <laughs> What's going on? What is Tim doing? What's happening here? This is at SFU. Tim from Neptune Records and Kingfisher Blues Records. I think Tim was rocking out here. He's I have a feeling. Rocking yeah, rocking out to our San Quentin video yeah. at uh, at SFU on one of the hottest days of that summer. I remember that. You got it right here. You've got, you actually pointed him out. He's like, that's him. That's him. Right there. Right there. That's Tim. And Tim actually bought your, I think it was Silver Side Up for 50 cents wow. at a garage sale. Got a deal. Nice. And then he sold it on Discogs to a guy in the UK for $500. An arborist. What? How do you know? How do, arbor, how do arbor, He said he was an arborist. Arborists have that much money? That's a lot of money. Trimming trees. <laughs> in, trimming trees in the UK is a lucrative business. <laughs> 
<laughs> I, lo- I love the provenance of that uh, that uh, CD. That's great. I like that. Now it's in the hands of an arborist, and yeah. it's been and the value has been extremely inflated. Good job yeah. selling that for five hundred bucks. What was it like, Chad, to get dissed by Mark Zuckerberg? Uh, I think it was Satis- satisfying. I just I, <laughs> I didn't really think much of it. Mm. Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't think it hurts much when a, when a nerd throws a rock at a tank. <laughs> Ah, boom. <laughs> it was, you know what? It's like, I think fun, funny is funny. It felt, when he did it, it felt like lo, low hanging, yeah, very contrived, low hanging fruit. And I was like, you know, make it funny, it's fine. Kind of hurt a little bit the Morgan Freeman. Yeah. Actually, it was, was uh, narrating us, but, uh, uh, you know, I got over pretty quick, so. What about Trump tweeting out your music? <laughs> also very bizarre. I mean, so we've we've really run the gamut here, and we've like started off with you know our incredibly humble beginnings, and to go from that to a question like, what's it like to have Trump, uh, you know, tweet out something about? I think it was photograph. I think it was something like that. Um, bizarre, yeah. you know, very bizarre. Uh, that one is. Uh, it that one's really tough to put words on. Yeah. <laughs> I could have done without it, put it that way. Yeah. <laughs> What do you do when that happens? Like you wake up and like, oh my god! Like, can you do anything? Um, someone, oh, yeah, you can do something. <laughs> I got talked off the ledge that night. We were in Rio that night. I thought it was hilarious. I, I was like, because somebody, uh, somebody came to us with the metrics the following week, and they said, did you realize that because he tweeted that uh, uh, photograph got played seven hundred million times? Yeah, I'm not going to give him that credit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, we we had we stepped back, didn't do anything. Um, the label uh, went and said, "You can't do that. This is illegal. You you can't use the bands, whatever." We just sort of stepped back and didn't do anything. So, what about when Nickelback lost a popularity contest to a pickle? <laughs> that broke my heart. Truthfully, broke my heart. Um, you know, I love I like pickles. Um, I think we were in the. I think we were at the. Uh, the apex of the hate at that point in time. It was a little tough to get away from Nickelback on, like on the radio and on TV and whatnot at that point in time. So I think we could have lost a popularity contest to just about anyone at that point in oh, time. Oh, yeah. But- Avril tried to help out, didn't she? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, she she uh, she's a, uh, a staunch defender of the band. And, um, you know, when, when she, anytime somebody's just taking low blows, uh, you know... I, Th- it, there, the nice thing is that there's been a softening. There has been a softening on the band, which is is great. It's nice to uh, to uh, no longer be public enemy number one when it you know when it comes to just making music. So, anything else you want to add to the people out there at all? Yeah. Do 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 do. Uh, not quite. <laughs> <laughs> no, we want to do that. No, that's uh, that's all I want to do. That's anything all, you want? That's all, everyone that's all I'm here for. Why should people care about Dickelback? Why should people care? Well, they, they don't have to. <laughs> We're just a band that makes music. That's all. No, they don't have to care. But if they did, it would be nice. That's true. There you go. It would be nice. We'll be nice to you. You'd be nice to us. Well, thanks so much, Nickelback. Keep on rocking in the free world. And do, do, do. Do, do. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. Now that one, that's real. That's real right there. So he does the power stance and I fall over him. Should we just should we just grab the stuff? Uh, so I'm thinking we should take it and go. He's not going anywhere. Yeah. Just, let's uh, listen. Let's what see what we didn't get to. Whatever you can hold on to. Let's take it and go.